All right. Looks like we are live and in person. All right. All right. All, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me just bring me up on this side. All right. Because we are going to be doing some right capital stuff here today, my amigos. That means my friends in Espanol, for those of you who don't speak the language like Pablo does. Yeah, what's up, big man? All right. All right, hold on just a second, Pablo. Make sure we got everybody on board. Hey, what's going on, Debbie? Okay, Paso. Where are you, uh, Land Cruiser, Nancy, and uh, Debbie? Where are you all coming in from? What's your neck of the woods? Let's get, uh, where's the, oh, there we go. All right, California. Uh, Don, right on. All right. Land shark, go. Hey, Jill. King of the road, eat my dirt. Oh, look at Pablo. Do you see Pablo? He gave you a big old kiss. If Kim Davis is on here, she's very, or he is very, very angry because she, Orlando, right on. She does not like uh, Pablo. Probably because uh, Pablo's giving me all kinds of germs. Gulfport, Mississippi, right on. Southern Cal. Hey, Nancy, I remember you from Florida. It's actually funny because uh, I think all these people are scared crapless of the, of the germs and the virus and whatnot. How many of them have cats and dogs? Uh, Mika, right on. A Connecticut in the house, too. I mean, uh, <laughs> did you know we're a cat? <laughs> Especially an outside cat, my goodness. Western New York, Vic, que paso. Crazy. Crazy. And we'll just let some other folks jump on here real quick. And then we'll start getting to the, the right capital stuff. Uh, Senior John from New York, right on. How, uh, Tina? All right. I think Tina, if memory serves, California as well. All right, right. Um, uh, Kevin, right on. 30,000 subscribers. Yeah, who would have thunk it, man? Who would have thunk it? Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> Hey, 30,000. I mean, some of these guys, I was watching some guy uh, yesterday, Penguin Zero Z or something like that. And uh, he's a funny guy, but he's got like 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 one and a half million subscribers. Hey, what's going on, man? My man from Kansas City, Heplin, right on. Heplin Auto Repair. Uh, Pablo's asymptomatic, right? I was like, and this guy been doing it for 12 years, this guy, Penguin Zero Z. He's a funny guy. Um, I, it's a, uh, uh, Margaret, right? That's ah, our Kansas City Chiefs fan. Margaret Schaefer in the house. Uh, Margaret Schaefer, the Chiefs. Uh, yeah. What are we going to do about those crazy Chiefs? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to be able to argue about some other than stupid commie virus. I do. I'm looking forward to it. That's for sure. Because uh, the trash picking guy is 240. Trash picking guy is a crazy that's a, that's i mean literally at the end of the day that's what makes youtube freaking awesome is I, I just watched a ton of gardening channels i was watching just right before we got on this my man uh kang star uh k-h-a-n-g kang star which like patrick star you know from spongebob kang star and he's doing one uh growing uh sunflower microgreens outdoors oh you guys probably can't see that can you um and growing and I'm watching one sunflower microgreens indoors, and he now has 172,000. I remember he only had 30,000 when I was watching him, which is pretty crazy. So, uh, and Pablo, and Pablo knows soccer is the best. Say right on it, Daniel. Rob W. Uh, but anyway, if you're, if you're interested in gardening and whatnot, like here's Kang Star. He's got one from seven years ago. Um, I, I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, but anyway. How to grow pea shoots and sunflower sprouts microgreens from seven years ago. So pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, I, I just, if you're going to get, get on YouTube, you got to stay with it, man. Cause, uh, it's, uh, it, oh man, 240,000 people watch ta taco stacks, pick garbage every day. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. Um, all right. So, uh, Couple more minutes here. Did I'm not sure. Does the do you all get the the notices by chance about uh, that the the things live stream or not? Last week, a lot of people said they did not. That's why that background is is lousy. My wife has a Chinese antibodies. Oh boy, 
that's gotta be good. She, uh, <laughs> so, uh, does that mean she's safe? Right. Uh, uh, that's why the, um, Oh, that's why I got what you're saying, Vic, because when you have the background, ah, I see what you're saying. So, Vic, what you're saying is with the background, you can't see this stuff. Interesting. All right. You got email, Daniel? All right. Huh. That's interesting. So I'll next time, I'll probably take the background off. I didn't think about that. That's uh, all right. Jeff, Jeff Henricks, right on, man. Wait, Jeff, are you the Jeff? Do you know who is that Jeff, my man Jeff? No, that's a different. Okay, gotcha. I gotta. I used to work with a guy named could have sworn his name was Jeff Henricks. I don't think you're him, man, but uh right on. John didn't get noticed. Yes, man. Every seven o'clock, every seven o'clock, Sunday, Eastern, seven o'clock, we'll be doing mm -hmm. this. I want to uh, I try to get off within an hour and a half or so. Uh, because the wifey and I like to watch our masterpiece theater shows um and it was uh yes very very little symptoms right on i still think the comedy virus goes back to october in america i really really do i i am now you i i'm convinced it does um let's just say it this way i, I a lady talked to me who and I, i've said this a couple of videos hey dan uh and she uh she said she was sick as a dog and some of the people she works with and she's in international travel and long story short, they tested her and they, they, they couldn't, it wasn't the flu, it wasn't anything, but she goes, it felt, it was horrible. And they all got sick. And, uh, and, and long story short, she goes, I, we think that was uh, the coronavirus. And I know for a fact, they got people and uh, all right, Nancy, right on. Nancy spent party yesterday, plugging in food and the thing, Marie, um, ours, ARs are fun, right? Anyway, so she said, uh, we, we have uh, what the knowledge that the, the comedy virus was in at least December. We know that. So, all right. So let's uh, let's start jumping into stuff here. I want to go. I want to start with. The uh, hold on just a second. All right. Let me get there. And. Uh, hold on just a second. Hey, Jerry from California. Springfield, Missouri. Right on. All right. I'm going to share with you an email I got, and then we're going to dive into right capital. And if I can find my man here, I hope I didn't delete it. You only watch Dan Akron. <laughs> uh, looking for an ETF that'd be 25% telecommunications. Any idea? I, no, I don't have any idea. Sorry, man. Oh my goodness! In New York, they're talking about no school in the fall. This freaking is it just this is insane. I just I, whatever happened, we're falling the science. I I can't take it. I can't take it. There's the, just, they're falling the science as long as they freaking the science as long as they can tell you how to live your life, man. That's it's just freaking nuts. All right, here we go. All right, so my man, we're gonna call him Lanny. He emails me. And he says, he says, um, he says, not pretty. So he get kind of, all right. So the first question is, uh, all right. So I'm going to start with, hello, Josh, enjoy your videos, blah, blah, blah. Uh, received a call to refinance our mortgage, which we just did last year. I'm 64, retired on social security. And his wife is about the same age. And we'll go on all this a little bit more. Current mortgage owed is about 200000 about 1100 bucks a month. Like I always say, so for every, where'd you go, buddy? For every uh, 100000 that you have in a mortgage outstanding, you're looking at typically about 500 bucks a month in payments. Just keep that in the back of your mind. So for every $100,000 of a mortgage is about basically 500 bucks a month. El Katrine, right on. All right, so, uh, so he's got about 200000 He pays about 1100 bucks a month, which includes everything, to include PMI. All right, uh, and then flood insurance. He pay. Uh, he's got three, four, three eighths is his interest rate, and we're gonna we're kind of going over this a little bit. It's gonna cost about ten thousand bucks a month, uh, ten thousand dollars to do it. It'll make his monthly payments go down by ten bucks. That's it. So I was, eh. uh, and then of course I think he said he's going to. I can't remember what the terms are gonna be. Anyway, long story short, it's gonna it's gonna cost about ten thousand bucks in total fees in which to reduce the payment uh for about 10 bucks a month i i didn't i didn't understand that at all 
uh, one second. Okay, he would save uh, he would save about thirty six thousand uh, because he'd he'd reduce it by four years. That's what it was. So he'd save thirty six thousand of the of the course of his loan. Now remember, he's only he's sixty four years old. All right. Um, let's face it; we'll never live long enough to pay off the house, or our children will not inherit it. And I I said so. We'll get in that in just a second. My wife has no plans to sell, downsize, or move to a warmer climate, even though she hates the cold and snow. All the family lives close by, and we're in a state that I won't say. Our combined retirement uh, was about 500000 bucks at the end of December. Now it's about four hundred dollars when he had written this to me, which is at the uh, at the, the, the lowest that you could possibly get because of commie virus. So it's probably back up to you know, 485 or something like that now. Uh, he gets 1500 bucks a month, Social Security, uh, and uh, she'll get about 3000 a month uh, when she's at her full retirement age. So that's 4500 bucks a month right there. Um, all right. So then I said, I was like, uh, first thing I said, I don't get why your, your kids wouldn't inherit the house just because you owe a debt on it doesn't mean they don't inherit it. They, they could sell it if there's any equity in there. But he, and, uh, so he goes, oh yeah, okay. That makes sense. So uh, the first thing is he was way too nervous, um, about the house thinking his kids weren't going to get it. And I, this, we didn't do a plan for this guy. I, I, I didn't do a plan, but I, I said, no, man, come on, stop, 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 stop. I mean, it, to stop your, your kids are going to inherit the house for heaven's sake dude you know what i'm saying stop this idea just because you owe it the bank is the whole thing they don't they just get they get to get paid first but your kids get the rest all right so then i emailed them i said uh hold on a second I, and I said well give me some more numbers here larry uh lanny what did i say lanny larry lanny lanny i think so give me some more numbers and so he, he has about 4400 bucks a month uh, and expenses. So this is what we're going to go into right capital. Uh, he gives me a breakdown here. Um, and that 4400 bucks a month includes his mortgage. He's, he's helping one of his kids with student uh, student loan. Uh, he has a tractor. He has a home equity line of credit. He's got a car. Um, he's got property tax. Um, let's see. Because because uh, in his state in the Northeast, they kill you on property tax. And some of you from the state might know where, where I'm talking about. All right, but he's spending about 4,400 bucks a month. That's what his, his expenses are, all right? He's on Medicare. And I'm like, but you got 4,500 bucks a month coming in from Social Security, man. Um, and I said, it's going to cost you $10,000 to say $50 a month for 26 years? Uh, why not just take reverse mortgage and be done with a monthly payment outright? Save the money you're currently spending on your mortgage of liquid assets. And I said, I don't get it. And they said, then he emailed me his expenditures. I said, dude, you're fine. So this is where we're left off. We got a guy who's spending, who's got about 4,500 bucks a month coming from social security. He's got roughly $4,500 a month going out. Now he gives himself of that 4,500 bucks a month, 300 is weekly cash. <laughs> so that's 1,200 bucks a month. Weekly cash is expenditures on top of all the other stuff. So the whole, I'm sitting there thinking this is typical, man. Guy's got half a mil. And he thinks he's going to be destitute. And he says it's not pretty. And I just, it drives me freaking crazy, man. So I'm just sitting there thinking, I, I don't blame this guy. And this guy's been sold freaking snake oil by everyone in financial planning uh, to save their lives. So let's dive into this right capital stuff. So we're going to go to more, I think, right? Or where do I got to go? More? No, I got to go to share. So we're going to share a screen and we're going to go to right capital. Hey, Sam, Sam, you still voted for Joe Biden? Come on, man. Come on. Do me a freaking solid and say, yeah, Joe Biden, a freaking scumbag. All right, so we got uh, we got Larry or Lanny. I keep saying Larry. My, we got Lanny and Maggie Sample up here. All right, so we got a net worth, and I didn't include their home. Hold on a second. Let me just get, uh, all right, Gary Rockwell. Debt free is the way to go, man. Right on, right on. All right, and there you go. Jerry's hooking my man or lady Jody T up with some ideas. I like it. All right. All right, so let's go up here. So we're going to go. I want to start with right capital. I just want to make sure you all can see it. Okay, cool. Looks like you can see this. Sweet. And yes, you can see my other uh, stuff up here. That's fine. Um, all right, so let's go to Larry and... Lanny, I should have just called him Larry. My God, I keep saying Lanny. It's ends. Lanny and Maggie Sample. All right, so first thing, this is the dashboard. So some of y'all might be new here. 
Uh, some of you might be not, but this will be a good refresher because Wright Capital changes all the flip in time and updates. When I say change, I mean updates. They do a lot of updates, which are fantastic. So other than my man, Sam, who's going to tell me he's going to vote for uh, Trumpster, I'm a, uh, ah, there, he didn't say that. Okay. All right. So I was, uh, well, I'm not going to respond to any other comments right quick. So I will later on. I just want to kind of go over this first and foremost, then we'll look at comments. Um because my goal in life is to get Sam S., a Navy guy, to vote for the Trumpster. And uh, that's the one goal I have in life. And if once that happens, life is good. Until it happens, meh. All right, but anyway, so I'm not going to see, I'm not even looking at comments right now, my friends. We'll get into that in a, we'll get into that with some Q&A after this. But I just want to kind of go over this so you can see what I do. So we're at the dashboard. Now, the first thing you do in the dashboard is we go to profile. Now, I put all this in here. There's nothing that you'll know. You won't know who this guy is or anything. So I'm going to profile. All right. So what you'll see here is he keeps $45,000 in the bank. So he has a bank account. And to add a bank account, you just go to add account. I mean, it's literally that simple. Bank. And now the one thing I tell you, make sure you make it the owner is correct. Make sure you have the correct owner. So we got joint Maggie Lanning. All right. It doesn't really matter what kind of this right here doesn't matter. All these things are paying the same amount of money. In fact, if I, if to be perfectly honest, with, um, I had a guy I was dealing with the other day, nice guy. Um, but he had all his, he manually put all his CDs. He's got a bunch of like $5,000 CDs, which is good. He didn't need to do all that. And the reason is because you're anything that's in this account, the bank account is only going to give you 0.5%. It's literally just, that's it. I think actually, can you do a, hey, hold on a second. Maybe it changes. Yeah. It doesn't give you, you can't, uh, it doesn't give an interest rate if you do anything else. So basically what's happening here, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in CDs of which you have six, or what's uh, five CDs at 20,000 bucks a pop, just throw them all in one fell swoop. It, it does, you don't need to put them individually. Just FYI, you just throw them all in one fell swoop. If you got $100,000 in CDs, $100,000 in checking, and $100,000 in savings, just throw it all, $300,000 in bank. And I, I just say savings account is fine. It, it doesn't, it, it, this right here isn't, uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good thing to, to use because you're not making much interest, but it won't change the dynamics if you have a three-year CD or a four-year CD or anything like that. I just wouldn't spend the time doing that. All right, so now we're just going to get rid of this, this. And then just make sure you hit save, by the way. Now, if you don't want to have it included in the plan, like say you got a 529 plan for a kid or something like that, you just uncheck that and save it. You see what I'm saying? That's it. Or say you got a, uh, uh, your mom is going to leave you some money and she's not doing so good. And she, you know, Cuomo threw her. Uh, she had uh, the sickness and Cuomo threw her into a nursing home. And, uh, and she's going to die because of Andrew Cuomo even though he still has an 80% approval rating in New York state boggles his mind. And, but you're saying, look, I, I know I'm going to get that money from my mom, but I don't want to have it in here, but I would like to keep it in the software so I can look at it later on. Just uncheck it. You see what I'm saying? If that makes sense. All right. So now we're going to get rid of this one. All right. Secondly, I never use any credit cards. Um, the credit card stuff, I don't think you should use. Um, and, and the reason for that is because it, it, it can really jack up cash flow, my friends. It, it's it's weird because it never. It, if you have a five thousand dollar credit card at zero percent, you're spending two hundred fifty bucks a month. Um, it, it just it's it will zero that out at some point. But if it, if the credit card is linked to like I have USA, so if my credit card at USA is linked to this account, and it, it just it it jacks up the cash flow. I, I don't know how else to say that it. it because I always pay off my credit card, but it always looks like it's perpetual. Does that make sense? So if I'm paying off my credit card, uh, it, it, I don't want it to show up as part of my outgoing cash flow as a debt because I'm already paying it off. If that makes sense. So it's just I wouldn't add my credit. I, I guess you could add your credit card as long as you're not linking them to an account. Because if you do and it just pulls, it scrapes the, the income from or the credit card debt from other account from your real account, it looks like it's always a debt out there if that makes sense. And, and that's going to, that's what's going to screw up your cash flow. So I never use credit cards. I hope that makes sense. All right. So now we're going to go to investments. So let's see what old, uh, uh, and they got, uh, 10,000 shares of the Wellington fund. And is that the price right now? Let's take a look. And again, they don't really, I'm just using this for an example. I thought Wellington fund, hold on just a second. Uh, V W E L X. Oops. 
B W E L X. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Uh, all right. So they, uh, four hundred eighteen thousand dollars, ten thousand three hundred eighty six shares at forty point thirty three. Yeah, that's right. All right. So what's happening here is it's critical to get the number of shares. Now, I cannot stress this enough. So I'm saying, old Maggie's got uh, you know basically four hundred twenty thousand dollars of Wellington fund. Uh, we want the number of shares and the ticker, so that way it can be updated. I mean, look, it tells you right now. We got four. We got a price of. 4033 we got quantity of 10386 uh shares uh so this we want it to update and if you don't have the shares in here it it's it's just it's static and we don't want that we want it to be updating so make sure you put the number of shares in there. i cannot stress this enough um the easiest thing is just to link them so if this were at vanguard just link it to vanguard and what you do there is just go to link account well, obviously not going to do that here but we'll see uh uh, USA Schwab. I'll have to link my Schwab stuff now because USA has moved over to Schwab, but I don't even know what Navian is. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of different. Let's see. Uh, what's one we could use? We have Fidelity. Let's do T Row Price. T Row. Oops, what is it? T Row. Huh, weird. Uh, let's do Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy. There it goes. So Navy Federal. I'm not sure why T Row Price isn't. That's weird. TRP. Yeah, maybe there's T row price. Anyway, just link your accounts. Pretty easy. And if it's uh, if it's you know multi-level authentication, it could be a little bit more challenge. One thing I have noticed is sometimes you got to go in there two or three times um, to, to get it linked properly. With USA, it's it's you know two-step multi two-step authentication authentication. And so if it's not working right out of the gate, just go back and do it again. Go back. Sometimes it takes four or five times. I know with Morgan Stanley, I've had a number of people have issues with Morgan Stanley. Just got to keep trying. If it doesn't work, then just go in there and manually enter the account. So let's show you what I do. So to manually enter the accounts, we go to add account, right? And we go to investment, add account investment. And here it's going to default to the first person whose name is up here. So we got Lanny's first, Maggie's second. All right. Um, now what's going to happen is, I'm just telling you right now, if you, we're going to add a holding just to show you how this works. So we're just going to, we're going to say, okay, we're going to say, uh, we're going to add a holding and we're just going to add VTSAX. Oops. We're going to add uh, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index and we're going to add 100 shares. All right. So then we're going to hit save. All right. Actually, let me I tell you what. Let me do something else for a second. Let me get rid of that. I want to show you. I'm going to show you what happens. I want to show you something different here. Hold on a second. All right. There we go. All right. So we're going to add, we're going to add account and we're going to go to investments. So we're adding account investment. And then we're going to go to, we're going to say it's a traditional IRA. We'll say it's Lanny's IRA. Now we're going to go to Holden. All right. Now we're going to go to v, VTSAX. And we're going to say Lanny's got 100 shares in VTSAX. And we're going to hit save. Oh, what happened here? Wait a second. That was IRA, but now it's taxable account. Did you see what happened? Did you see that? You got to make sure you hit save. You got to make sure when you start the account, let me show you to this again. I know this might seem pretty infantile, but I'm telling you, it's critical. You got to make sure you add account, investment. We're going to uh, Lanny's investment account. We're going, we want to make it an IRA. We want to hit save first. Save. Save that account type. Save the account type first, because if you don't, it's going to default back to taxable account for some ungodly reason. And then what's going to happen is when, I, when we pull up your uh, portfolio, it's going to look like everything is taxable. And it's I'm telling you, it's just not. So make sure you save that investment account first. Then you go to ad holding. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Now, look, if it's an, uh, a taxable account, make sure you save it. Now we're going to see ad holding. And VTSAX, we'll just do VTV. We got 10, 100 shares of VTV. It'll default, it'll tell you what the value is. It's gonna say we got 10,000 bucks in there, 97.7. But notice we got no cost basis. Man, you gotta put something for a cost basis or else the number is gonna be skewed because the software thinks every single penny that you sell will be taxable to you. That doesn't make sense. If it's a taxable account, you certainly have a cost basis of some amount. So make sure you put your cost basis in there. And if you don't know what cost basis is, think about it like your house. 
How much did you pay for your house? You paid 200 for it. What do you sell it for? 300. So if you sold it for 300, the first 200 is not, I mean, forget about the, the gain, the, the exclusion, all that. If you sold it for 300, the first 200 is your return of principal, your cost basis. So only 100,000 is subject to capital gains tax. Now for a home, you don't have to pay tax on that, but still just think about it like that. If you buy a house for 200,000 bucks and you sell it for 300,000 bucks, you have a $100,000 gain on a $200,000 cost basis. It's critically important to get that information in there. I cannot tell you how, how many people don't. I'm like, oh my goodness, the whole tax code is screwed up or your, your tax will be jacked up because we don't know what your cost basis is. All right, so let's delete that. Something else I see a lot, of people just default to cash all the time. Oh, don't do that. I can't tell you how many people default to cash. It's not, they'll say, they'll say, I got this, I, they'll say, Lane's got an IRA. And they'll say IRA, oops, let's just go here. And they'll just do IRA here. And then they'll sit save. And they'll say, I got $200,000 in there. And, and, and the software, only thing the software thinks is that you have, you're only making one half of 1%. Now I can guarantee you every single time I go to retirement, I'm not gonna do it yet. If that's all shown as cash, you're always gonna be, uh, it's always gonna be zero. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that. My retirement, Josh says, I'm going to run out of money. Oh, my goodness. And I, I, I know for a fact what's happening is that you have everything in cash. You don't have it as a security. All right. So let me just get rid of that. And we're just going to go ahead and delete this whole account. All right. Now, it, I, look, I don't deal with a whole. Oh, boy. Hey, buddy. If you have um, IRAs, you go to investment. You, you, all of these accounts, non-qualified pension plan, deferred comp. Qualified annuity, SEP, Simple Roth, you, I mean, you name it. You got all these different accounts, donor, I, I mean, donor advised accounts. You can put all that stuff in there. I would say just get your initial stuff in there. Let's keep it as simple as possible initially just to get the stuff in there. All right. Don't, now, the health savings account's a big one. Make sure you get that one in there, but don't go crazy here. Um, we, got, we got add account, we got stock plan. Now, if you want to add a stock plan, do that too, and that's fine. I got no qualm with that at all. The vast majority of people I work with don't have that issue. I mean, some might have RSUs, um, restricted stock units and whatnot. Some might have I, uh, all kinds of incentive stock options, all kinds of stuff. That's fine, but don't kill yourself trying to figure this stuff out. You don't have to be specific with every single detail. Now, if you have it, that's fine, but don't sit there and say, I wonder if I have it, do I have it? I, I just don't. If, it's kind of like, you know, if you have an RSU. If you don't know what an RSU is, I guarantee you don't have it. All right, so now again, link account is always best. The drawback about linking account is it's, uh, it is encrypted. I think it's 256 encryption is what they use. But it can always be hacked. I mean, heaven forbid, man, anything can be hacked anymore. I, we're, I mean, I guarantee the NSA is watching us right now. They got targeted on my back because I don't like Dr. Fauci. So they're saying, we're going to come get you, Josh. Uh, but anything can be hacked. Just be advised. So just, I mean, it sucks. I don't know what else to tell you, but welcome to the, the world that we're living in for sure. All right, so a LinkedIn accounts is always better because it'll keep it'll, it'll scrape the cost basis, it'll scrape your updates, it'll scrape at your additions you make and all that. It's always better for sure. All right, so let's. Uh, I will take a, a second right here. Uh, all right, all right. Just make sure I don't see anybody. All right. There you go. So, okay, Daniel, uh, I'm glad Daniel's on here. Uh, Daniel uh, says there is a setting to say you always play credit card uh, full each month. I missed before. Notice the balance was increasing over time. Cool. All right, sweet. So that's see, that's my man, Daniel. He, uh, he knows a thing or two about this. So good. So Daniel, don't he hesitate to pipe in too. Um, all right, sweet. So now let's go over to loan. We're going to go to property. So what I do is I go to your assets first. We're going to go to uh, card or bank, investment, a property. All right. Now here's the thing. In this case, I got a house, uh, 235 is what the current value is. Uh, purchase price, 200,000. All right. They got an annual appreciation, 2%. You need to put an appreciation there, my friends. A lot of people say, I live in some places not going to appreciate. If, if you truly think that that's, that's fine. But the reason we want appreciation in there is because it'll be reflected in your increasing property taxes, if that makes sense. So make sure you put, I was just default to 2%. You can't go wrong there. 
All right, so you can see uh, that this right here, your annual property tax and your homeowner's insurance are included in a line item for expense. And I will get in that here in just a second. And that's pretty simple, right? You bought the house in 2015, you own it, you own it jointly, you can, you own, I mean, there's really, I don't know what else to say on that. Now we're gonna go to loan, all right? In this case, to do a loan, you just go to add account and you do a loan. I get this question a lot, how do I, how do I put a mortgage in there? So we go to add account, always remember this green button thing, add account, you can always delete it if you screw it up, you're not gonna break anything. You just say loan, and it'll tell you what kind of loan is it. You got mortgage, you got just an uh, arm, you got interest only, home equity, reverse mortgage, car, you, I mean, you name it, you got all kinds of stuff, it's awesome. Uh, you can model a reverse mortgage, which I think is freaking fantastic. I love it. You can uh, do an interest-only home equity line of credit. You can do whatever you want. It's great. I love it. Hopefully, you don't have much debt, but if you need to model stuff, you, you should do it in there. All right, so now we're going to get rid of that. So in this case, uh, they got uh, Lanny and uh, old Maggie got mortgage loan uh, joint. Again, we wanted to make joint. You're certainly going to include it in the plan. Uh, the original amount is 200000 bucks. The, and basically what happens is software calculates the four three eights right here. They took their loan out in 2017. It's a three 30 year term. It's the years, not the months, the years. Uh, and they have a balance left right now, 196,000 bucks. So software calculates $999 as their payment. That is P and I principal and interest. That is not a uh, T and I, all right. That's not taxes and insurance or PMI. This is just uh, principal and interest. I just want you to know that because when we go here, this right here is 500 bucks a month of property tax. That's another you know, 110, something like that a month. That's going to be calculated as part of an expense someplace else, which we'll get to in a second. So just remember that when you have your loan, it is calculating your payment for you, or you can put it in there, whatever you want to do. But let's say our man Lanny said, hey, my monthly payment is 1200 bucks a month. Because that includes uh, principal uh, PITI, -P well, then he's going to be double counting his payment because he'll put twelve hundred bucks a month here, but that's not his loan amount. Man. That I mean, his, I mean that's not his payment. His payment for principal and, and interest is nine ninety nine. All right, so now we're going to go here. All right, so good. So we're all set up here. So then we're going to uh, what I do, I go back to uh, uh, my my property tax on my house is more than the software. Estimates. Well, your software doesn't estimate the taxes, Nancy. Um, you just want to go. I mean, you you're the one who says what your property tax is. So you go to property, and you hit annual property tax right there, and you just type it in, whatever it is. I hope that makes sense. Um, well, your home insurance. Then you just put it right there. So there's the annual insurance. So if you go under your your asset, your property, you just. Uh, The future goes up 10% a year. Oh, yeah. Software is only going to show what uh, uh, your, your homeowner's insurance is going up by 10% a year. All right, you, I'll, I'll show you how to do a different uh, expense for sure, because you, you don't want to put that in. You don't want you don't want to have a depreciation going up 10% a year here. All right. I want to go over something else, too. An investment. All right. You guys don't have access to this target allocation. I don't know why. So right capital, exactly. Mike C said, I'd live for another. Uh, I, Nancy, you must live in Florida, right? That's the only place I can see it going by 10% a year. Um, anyway, you don't have access to this. A lot of people say, what do I have access to? You don't. You, you don't. I don't know why right capital doesn't. But And when I say target allocation, it literally has nothing to do with you. If I change this, it, it's literally, it's, it'll change it for everybody. It just had, you know, it just has nothing to do with you at all. I just did a video on this, my friends, the other day. So watch that, maybe blink it because this is important. Um, but this target allocation is meaningless. When I mean meaningless, it literally has nothing to do with you specifically. It does not. When I'm running plans for clients, I don't have, I don't pay attention to this. The only reason I pay attention to it to show you literally what the difference in investments are, which I did in the video I just did the other day. A balanced 50-50 gives you four and a half with a standard deviation of 8.8. .8. In this case, they got a basically a moderately aggressive 64-36. They're getting 5.2% annual return with a 10.5% standard deviation. Pretty historically norm right there. Uh, if we go to preservation, it's 2080, and they're only going to get 2.9. And then if we go to most aggressive, 
uh, they're going to get 90, 10 is 6.3. Now I was made to my, uh, uh, it was a oh, Mississippi. Yeah. Oh, geez. At least it was made to my, uh, brought to my attention that you guys don't have access to this. Um, and I did not know that, that some of y'all didn't, if we go to retirement, and then you scroll down here. So we're going to retire. And I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself. And I'm going to come back. And, and we're going to don't get too far ahead. I just want to show you this while I'm thinking about it. Under retirement analysis, you'll have proposed and current plans. And I'll answer your question here a little bit, John. You go to action items. Make sure you, I don't know why this doesn't pop up automatically. This should. But anyway, you click on action items. You got to click that. It's not very conspicuous. There's a light green, ugly green. Miami Dolphins, ugly green. Remember the old Dolphins uniforms? They were so good. That ugly green is horrific. And you click on that puppy. And then uh, you'll see where it says asset allocation. You'll see this drop down. It turns out you guys don't have access to these two that I created. Um, you only have access to the seven defaults that Right Capital creates. I, uh, that pissed me off. I said, man, you guys got to fix that. And the guy said, no, I understood. Um, anyway, I did not know that. Uh, this is what the guy from Right Capital said. He said that you all should have access to the ones I created. And then he said, it turns out you don't. I said, really? Anyway, so that, that was annoying. Um, you know, it's uh, not everything's perfect to Right Capital. It's, it's the best there is, in my opinion. But not everything is perfect. But anyway, so you can see right here, you don't have these two, these two things, which, uh, which is too bad. But you do have all these other ones right here, current allocation, preservation, you can see all that. All right. So just while John was asking, he said, what's the difference between proposed and current? All right. So current is when we're locking everything down. All right. So you see current, right? Let me just. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Let me show. Okay, cool. All right. So here's current, which is everything that we put in up to this point. Uh, which is showing what the planning success rate. The propose is anything we change here, here, anything we change and we hit refresh, anything we change. And one of the things I like changing to see if it's successful or not is what if we spend 4,000 a month as opposed to 3,500? Now, there's lots of drawbacks on this and I'll share with you just a second. But oh my goodness, we still have if we, if we increase our expenditures from 3,500 to 4,000, but we have our current allocation from basically moderately growth, uh, moderately aggressive, aggressive to growth, which is basically 70, 30, we still have 100% chance probability of success, but we're leaving the kiddos 1.036 million. So that's basically what 70,000 more than we did before. What if we have, uh, I don't know, uh, let's see. What if we have, uh, you know, Lanny live until he's 95. Well, probably increase even more, I think, because he's gonna have another, you know, five years of social security. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, I'm not sure why Maggie's not in there, but, but we can fix that. Um, anyway, so lots of different things you can do. What if they take social security later at age 70? Now, this is just for a quick and easy what if. This isn't really what I suggest that you did. Um, for everything what i mean by that the most what i'm looking for really in this isn't your best deal for social security strategies is mostly your your pre your retirement living expo well, right here well i'll get in that in just a second it's mostly your living expenses and really the difference in how if you were invested a little bit differently just play around this but don't this isn't how can i say this this is good it's not great. And what I mean it's not great is there's other ways to look at your planning a lot more thoroughly than just this. This kind of gives you a quick and easy right here. But that's the difference between growth or a current and proposed. What I like to do instead, because I'm, I'm anal about this, I love the software, is that I'd rather much go into um, cash flows, all right? And what I mean by that is when you go to, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself. We'll go back, we'll go back. Hold on, we'll, we'll revisit this. So let me go back to profile. All right, so now we're, we already did net worth. So these guys got 502,000 of, of net worth, not liquid, net worth, all right? Now we wanna go to family. And we got Lanny, he's 64. His date of birth is then, lives in Illinois. And we got Maggie, she's 65, date of birth is then, and she also lives in Illinois. Uh, Maggie, we have default that she's gonna live till she's 90. And Lanny, we got default that he's gonna live till he's 90. 
when how will they live i don't know but that's our default you can change that just go to family and you change it all right so now let's go to goals and under goals we have maggie retiring next year and you can even say the month for which she wants to retire well this year excuse me august 2020 my old maggie wants to retire august 2020 lanny just did now we got uh, annual retirement health care costs. This is a big one. I want to show you guys how this works. So annual, remember this is under goals. So profile goals, right? Annual retirement health care costs. Now what we're doing here is going to default to simple approach, right? So it's going to default here. So when you click on this, annual retirement health care costs, the default will be simple. I don't want simple. I want detail. And I'm going to go into detail to show what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to detail. So what that means is, what is their uh, cost before Medicare kicks in, all right? So detail estimate, pre-Medicare, the annual cost will be between retirement age and 65 pre-Medicare. So a lot of you all who are going on COBRA or Obamacare or just paying for it outright, you're going to have a significant different cost once you're on Medicare. So we got to account for that. We can't just say you're going to pay 2000 bucks a month for each of you guys for the rest of your life. That's dumb. But we, you are going to pay 2000 bucks for, you know, for the rest of your life until 65. So in this case, we're saying they're, they're going to pay 18000 a year between them or $1,500 a month between them until they hit Medicare. Now we're going to say uh, the Medicare Part B is based on AGI, which is good. So the software already calculates Medicare Part B and Part D. All right, but it doesn't include a supplement or Medicare Advantage, all right? So the annual cost will be in addition to Medicare Part B and Part D, your supplement and your any out-of-pocket co-insurance and things of that nature. So in this case, I'm saying they're basically gonna spend, uh, I don't know, 120 bucks a month on a Medicare supplemental policy, plus a little bit for out-of-pocket for, uh, um, uh, for co-pays, uh, co-insurance, you know, you can, you can add to dentists. Remember, Medicare doesn't cover dentists and doesn't cover eyes. Um, does it cover ears? I can't remember. But Medicare doesn't cover dentists and eyes if memory serves. I can't remember if it covers ears or not. But anyway, so you want to add what, what you think is likely to be your annual out-of-pocket expenditures. All right, your annual out-of-pocket expenditures for dents, dentals, uh, for eyes, uh, your supplemental policy, or your Medicare Advantage and your co-pays. So in this case, I'm just saying 2000 bucks each on top of their Medicare Part B and on top of their Medicare Part D. Hope that makes sense. So we hit that and say, that's a big deal. If you're going to retire before 65, before Medicare kicks in, you really need to put that on there for sure. Uh, uh, target allocation is set for most aggressive in my software. Uh, no, Medicare supplemental policies can range from a significant amount from, no, dude, no, it's not true. You can get Medicare supplemental policies for more for a lot more than 120 because you live in Connecticut, but that's not the case for every state. They're, they range by state. Target allocation is set for most aggressive in my software. It, it doesn't matter. But anyway, if you go back, uh, it'll be to usually is what I ever I just changed it. So if I just changed the balance, it's going to show you as that right there. Um, most likely. All right. So yeah, because you live in Connecticut. Uh, so let's keep going. Um, where was I going to go here? All right. So we're going to go to profile again. We're going to go to goals. All right. So here's our goals. We talked to annual retirement healthcare cost. Uh, we hit uh, long-term care costs. Now I always zero this out and you can put whatever you want there, but basically the folks I deal with we, and that's Vic G, New York. There you go, Connecticut, New York. Uh, what's the other one? There's a couple big expensive states. The re, well, you don't. You, I J O and I did videos on this back, man, a year and a half to two years ago. J J A E O H, um, and we talked about uh, each state's Medicare supplemental policy, literally state by state by state. And actually, you can re read my book on that. And the issue is that uh, Connecticut, New York, a couple others. They mandate, they mandate that you can go from sub, from Medicare Advantage to Medicare Supplemental without being underwritten, which is insane. That's uh, just it's insane. So basically, when, because they mandate that, you have to pay more premium. So essentially, you, it, the thing is freaking stupid. So why would anyone go on 
Medicare uh, advantage, Medicare supplemental policy when you can go on Medicare Advantage until you need more services, then you switch over to Medicare supplemental. It's freaking stupid. And uh, so they're basically charged, it's just the whole thing's stupid. Whereas in Arizona, whereas Florida and states down the south, it doesn't come anywhere near what you guys are because again, your governments are run by morons. There's no other way around that. So just think about this. You don't need fire insurance until you have a fire and then you got fire insurance. Well, that's gonna be freaking crazy expensive, not just for you, but for everybody else because it's all part of the insurance group. <sighs> all right, so anyway, I always zero out long-term care. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't have to, you can do whatever you want, but I just, the way I look at it, folks, is the evidence is so overwhelming. The vast majority of people aren't gonna spend much money in, in a long-term care facility. Nowadays with Cuomo, literally throwing people into long-term care nursing homes to kill them, essentially. Uh, uh, half Whitmer, killing them. Governor Baker, so I'm bipartisan, killing them. And who was the other guy, too? We got freaking Half Wit, we got Cuomo, we got Baker. There's another one I was reading about, the freaking idiot from Illinois. Uh, while he's sending his uh, family to live to, to travel to Florida, all these guys are scumbags. There's no other way around it. They all should be freaking tarred and feathered, for sure. Um, but, you know, they're not going to be. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so I don't, I, 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 I don't know if I would ever consider going to a nursing home at this stage. I'm telling you right now. Now we know you have no rights. Your rights will be violated. Now we know uh, even if you were to be in there, you can't have your, your comforts of your, your family in there uh, because what some idiotic governor says is crazy. So I always zero that out. All right. Now that you can have in-home health care. Uh, can you today? I don't know. I don't know how that works, given the freaking insanity of the totalitarians. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have in-home health care, if you have long-term care, you are going to, uh, yeah, the PA health care minister, uh, freaking mind boggling. <sighs> I still, the, the department of health, say the department of health, who's making all the rules in Los Angeles County has a PhD in social work, social work. And she's the one dictating whether or not you go to jail. Crazy. All right. Uh, and of course, none of these were passed. There's no legislation that passed in this crap. None. Hey. The Democrats are for the little guy. Yeah. All right. So anyway, long-term care costs. Um, I zero that out. And the reason for that is if you do go to a continuing care retirement community, a nursing home or something like that, you're going to sell your house, man. You're going to sell your house, move in there, and, and you don't have to carry your house. So because of that, that is your long-term care cost. Again, just read my book, man. If you haven't bought it, Read it right here. You can, oh, geez, Louise. you can retire on Social Security. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my Vermont Bruins shirt. That's one of y'all sent to me. I forgot who it was. You can retire on Social Security. I show you exactly the likelihood, according to uh, the, the science, the data, actually not science, of how many people actually spend money on long-term care facilities. And what we see is the vast, 48 percent spend nothing, not just long term care facilities, but just long term care. Forty eight percent spend nothing is just this outlier of people on this side right here, which is about five percent of the population who spends a significant amount of money. So just FYI. All right. Now, in this case, I put retirement expenses. I zero that out. And the reason I did that is because I want to create. Retirement expenses with loans, retirement expenses without loans. Now, I'm not going to get into the details here, but what I also do is I also like to click a a, no, a go go, a slow go, and a no go years in retirement. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to go to add goal other, and we're going to say uh, go go retirement years. And if any of you all from DC, when you hear the word go go. You think of rare essence and experience unlimited and Chuck Brown of soul searchers. All right. So anyway, but that's not the go-go I'm talking about. We're talking go-go. Like you're fired up. You're ready to retire. And then I say, we're going to retire on 30,000 bucks a year or something like that. You see what I'm saying? And we're going to do it jointly. We're going to do a frequency every year. Make sure you do frequency every year. All right. And then how long are you going to do it for? And we're going to say, we're going to do it for the first 10 years. We're going to do it for the first 10 years of retirement. And we're going to hit save. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put another goal, add goal, other, and we're going to do uh, slow go years, right? And instead of spending 30000 a year, we're going to spend, let's say, 24000 And we're going to do that from 2031 to 2000 and 
40 or something. And again, make sure you do frequency every year. Now, if you're not spending it every year, don't do every year or whatever. So in this case for you, Nancy, who asked about, I need another expense for it to grow. And well, we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But one of the things you could always do is go gold. And you're going to say, I'm going to spend, um, how would we want to do that? And I said, well, I want to do it here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to do it here or not, because I don't think I can inflate it. Nah, we're not going to do that. Um, but anyway, if you want to do a goal on, say, I need an extra, you know, 3000 a year for homeowners insurance, you can say, homeowners insurance, Mississippi. You see what I'm saying? And you can say annual amount, I don't know, 3000 a year. Now, I do have every expenditure I am inflating at 2% a year, by the way. All right, so this will ought to be automatically be inflated by 2% a year. We'll get into a little bit more detail to show you some other ways to do that. Um, what do I know about DC GoGo? Man! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was raised in Silver Spring. Oh, not raised, went to high school in Silver Spring. Right up Georgia Ave, man. And they had the Cap Center. Remember the Cap? I didn't go to that. They there was I don't there was some white people went to the Cap Center go go the big go go thing they had in 1988 the Cap Center. Not many though, but I had that on on the old VHS. It was fantastic. So, uh, uh, man, oy. and Junkyard Band. Uh, my dad brought me when when I still lived up in Maine. He brought me go go crank and a 12 inch vinyl and said paint the White House black and had all these. Uh, uh, bands I'd never I was from Maine dudes dudes I'd never heard any of this like ever in my life and uh, just it was it was like literally and when I moved to the DC area and I heard go go and I heard like old hardcore punk rock I was like it's like opening my eyes to a whole new world that you didn't hear about me nowadays everything's on the internet so you can hear anything anywhere which is kind of cool but back then it wasn't like that back then the hardest thing in, in rock and uh in music was Judas Priest uh, and they only play that at like late at night and everything else was, you know, foreigner and Pat Benatar and freaking Jefferson starship. Uh, you just, you literally want to jump off a bridge head first into the, the death pit, uh, in the grand Canyon and never be heard from again. Cause that music was so bad. Oh, eighties pop music was the worst. Oh yeah. Yeah. If anyone says otherwise you're banned. All right. So, uh, Anyway, that's what I do. I mean, so you can do whatever you want. Now, if you don't want to go through that, you simply go to retirement expenses. And now here's what's cool. They just changed this. See, I'm, folks, everything is on, on your retirement plan. Oh, Pink Floyd. Jeez Louise, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pink Floyd. No. Um, everything in your retirement plan is based on, Lonnie, are you from D.C. area? Um, everything is based on your expenses. Please don't shirk this. This is critical. I cannot stress to you enough, folks, how important everything is. This one thing here is nothing is more important. Uh, not in Maine. No, hell. And not, no, not only did I live in Maine, I lived on island. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I could get was, uh, was a WBL, uh, were the Orioles. At night, you could get the Orioles. You had WBLM in Maine the blimp and that was a rock station and who knows what else they had, but you had the Orioles you could listen to on uh, at, was that WTOP? Oh, I forgot what it was, but up in uh, where my mom had moved in with uh, her husband, I was only there for six months. I lived on the third floor and I could hear the Orioles games on the radio, which is pretty cool at night. All right. So don't shirk this. This is huge. Anyway. So they just added this right here. Yeah, right on, man. I went to Blair. Uh, I went to Blair, my friend. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, I got a bunch of good friends in Baltimore for sure. In fact, uh, one of my friends was going to Morgan State. <laughs> uh, he used to date this girl at the, I don't know, Maryland School of Art or something like that, School of Art and Design. Uh, <laughs> uh, and she, uh, it's, I don't like it. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll, I'll share it with you all right anyway i have shared it before it's just uh the the some of the, the if there's anything worse than a wealthy white liberal from the northeast i i i, I don't know what it could possibly be and uh we all went to an orioles game and uh let's just put it this way uh she was a wealthy white liberal from the northeast 
and the dad came with us and the the patronizing tone of this guy to her boyfriend who went to Morgan State which is a black school I, I just I wanted to jump off a bridge into the dark depths of uh the Grand Canyon and never be heard from again because I was like can you just talk like a real human being for heaven's sake oh it was so embarrassing uh, all right. Anyway, so we're going to detail worksheet. This is pretty cool. It will still leave some to be desired, but you can put in here, you know, various things you want in terms of your bills, and utilities, charitable giving. I like it. I haven't used it yet. They just had this not too long ago, but I, I think it's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, that's fine. I, I have no qualm with doing that at all. I just haven't done that much. They still leave some to be desired here. I had a guy the other day who put miscellaneous and he put uncategorized. In fact, I'm going to work with him. Uh, on Wednesday, if he's on this call. Um, Hammerjacks. Well, that sounds familiar. Hammerjacks. Yeah, Kinks were a great band, man. Kinks, very libertarian, by the way. Very libertarian. I did not know that. Kinks were a great freaking band. They were revolutionary. I tell you, one of the most underlooked uh, rock roll bands in England. You know, everyone folks on the stupid Rolling Stones are horrible. The Beatles, oh, but the Beatles were deserved to be great. Rolling Stones are just oh, weak. But uh, the Kinks and the Who, so under-recognized, especially the Kinks. Oh, my goodness. How good were they? But the Who, oh. anyway. So uh, he had miscellaneous here and uncategorized here, and that's fine. But uh, the question was, what do we have? Because then, uh, anyway, so let, let me just keep going through this. Um I hope that makes sense. So in this, I'm going to delete all this stuff and just play around with it. So I want to get into the cash flow stuff before we get too far along here. What time? Oh, we've already been on here for an hour. Hammerjacks. What? That makes sense, man. I can't remember what that was. We used to go up to Inner Harbor and in, in, uh, Baltimore all the time when Inner Harbor just, uh, yes, the Cap Center just came out. In fact, Fear the Turtle, my man, uh, uh, Joel Salton was Salatin was on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast the other day that uh, somebody had told me about. And uh, Joel Salton kicks ass and takes uh, Keith Richards sends his loves. Uh, Joel Salton kicks ass, and kicks kicks butt and take names, man. Uh, from a farming perspective, love Joel Salton. So if you all listen to Joe Rogan, listen to the uh, 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 listen to the uh, Joe Rogan podcast he did the other day. Fantastic, lots of good stuff in there. How to save our souls? We gotta save our soul from rock and roll. All right, so now I want to go to income. All right, this is important too. All right, so make sure I cannot stress this enough. We're looking at Maggie's Social Security. Oh, okay, right on. Bulldoze, yeah, I say Hammerjack sounds familiar. I also went to the four games of Cal Ripken that he played. Uh, uh, all right, sorry, Steve. <laughs> Real quick, that he did against the Angels where he broke the record, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, yeah, Joe DiMaggio, out or Lou Gehrig. One of those guys. I was there, four four times four games straight yes me i have tickets and everything all right so sorry uh i want to stress your full monthly benefit put your pia in here your primary insurance amount at your fra your full retirement age do not put the amount that you're going to get at 70 or 62 in here don't the software will figure that out for you <laughs> it's all right man Friggin' Steve, what are we going to do with these guys? <sighs> um, anyway, so put your amount of your full, I cannot stress, monthly full benefit amount at PIA. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say how much, when are you going to start? When are you going to start taking Social Security? And then they'll figure it out. All right, so you don't need to do, you can, I don't, don't use simple estimate. Don't use no Social Security. You can put all your historical earnings in there if you want. You just go in here, you start typing up. That's actually not a bad thing. I think I don't think you have to. I mean, you literally say five, you know, 10 bucks. It'll, it'll do all the indexing for you, which is pretty cool. I like that. But then you just go to full retirement benefit, man. Um, yeah, right on, Gary. All right, right on. That's fantastic. All right, so put your FRA, your P, I mean, your PIA in here, which is the amount you'll get at your full retirement age, which is between 66 and 67. If you take it at 70, it'll change this to 70. All right. If you take it at 66, change it at 66, change it at 62, change it at that. All right. So anyway, we're going to take it at her full retirement age initially. I cannot stress enough. Now we already got Lanny. He's already taken. So we, uh, 
Yeah, right on, Carl. So you just put all your stuff in from your Social Security estimate. Right on. So Carl says, I'm assuming you can just use it from your Social Security estimate. It'll figure it out for you. That, that's without question. You can, I mean, hell, you can just go in there and do it and get it done without question. All right. Also, I got, so what we're doing here, if you want to do Roth conversions, you'll see I got a, a thing here under, it's called distribution. We go to add income, distribution, and you're going to get this box that shows up right here. Now, if we want to do Roth conversions, now we're not, Lanny didn't have any, so this is just for simplicity, but make sure you have it coming from the right account, all right? So a lot of times it'll default again to the first person's name in here. So Ma Maggie's got the money, not Lanny. So Maggie, this, there's no Roth conversions for Lanny. He's got no money. Um, so we want to, but we also want to make sure it comes from the right account. Is it coming from the IRA? Is it coming from the 401k? All right. Does it come from the Roth 401k? Because remember, you still want to move money over from the Roth 401k to your Roth IRA because there are RMDs on Roth 401ks. Now, if you're going to do anything with a distribution, you got to make sure you're saying what the distribution is. Are you just doing it to a rollover? So it's an IRA to a 401k to rollover. I wouldn't really mess with that. It's just the software will be fine without having to do that. Is it a rollover to 401k? And eh, really the only two things are going to be, it, it, I, I'm not a big fan of NUA. So I don't, I probably, I'd probably talk about that five times a year, if even that normal distribution or convert to Roth. Now, normal distribution is you're just pulling money out to live on. Well, I'll show you here. Taxation, penalty free if it's under the commie virus law, all right? The, uh, uh, the CARES Act, penalty free, or if you're post- 54 separate from service and the money's still in a 401k is it's your and if you're if you're a government employee of some sort it's post 49 as long as you're like a first responder you have access to your 403b your tsp off top i think it's tsp as well um and you have it access penalty free it's not tax free but it is penalty free just keep that in mind because we're converting it to a Roth, though, it's just standard. There is no penalties or there is taxes, but it's not penalty free. I mean, it's, it's not penalized, but the software will calculate that for you. All right. So uh, if it's if I 60 this year, no. Nah, so Mark says, if I'm 60 year, what should I put? What should you put in there? I'm assuming you're talking about Social Security. You put the amount you're going to get at your PI at your full retirement age. Literally, look at your Social Security statement. If you're 60 this year, that means you're born in what? 19, uh, oops, 2020, 1960, right? Yeah. So your full retirement age is 67. Just put what it says as your full retirement age. The software will do the rest. You don't need to just literally just put what it is going to be at your full retirement age. Look at your social security statement. They'll tell you at full retirement age, you're, you're going to get 2,700 bucks. Just put that in and the software will calculate it if, for whatever year you take it on. Um, I do have made recommendations taking Social Security benefits before the full retirement age. I've done videos on that. Um, I, I do so many videos, I wouldn't expect uh, you to find it that quickly. But if you look at Social Security Playlist, uh, Akash, you'll see that. Social Security Playlist, there are certainly a number of times to take Social Security before full retirement age. All right, so in this case, so Maggie's taking distributions, all right, and we're taking 33000 a year from her IRA and it's penalty free. Now this is because we we're doing the commie virus thing right now, because Maggie is over 64, it doesn't, I mean, over uh, 59 and a half, it won't matter, but let's just say Maggie was, you know, 52 years old and we have the CARES Act, we're going to take distributions of a hundred thousand, but we're going to do it over three years. Uh, you'd want to make sure you have it from an IRA or 401k. My man, Chris, Bar uh, Chris Barfield just wrote on the uh, Barfield financial website that uh, TSP is now allowed for the CARES Act. So TSP does allow you to take CARES Act distributions that are not uh, penalized. So Maggie, this won't apply to her simply because she's over the age of 59 and a half anyway. But look, she's taking 33000 a year. For the next three years, we see we got 2020 to 2022 because that's $100,000 and we're going to do penalty free. Notice not tax free. And it's a normal distribution simply because of the CARES Act. Now we're going to zero that out because she's not doing that. Anyway, that's how if you want to kind of model some things to take $100,000 out uh, due to the CARES Act, you can do that. All right. So uh, 
Yeah, you kidding me? So my man Pulverizer said, can't use CARES Act with my 401k board of trustees at night. Um, yeah, that that freaking pisses me off, dude. I, it's, uh, I, it's funny. I had a guy on here. His name's Rob. And he was a big supporter of mine for a long time. And then um, he got really upset with me because I didn't take his uh, fear mongering seriously about the commie virus. But actually, I think what it really got upset with me is that uh, I, he, he was he was trying to make a deliberate point about uh, that, you know, 401k plans are not allowing um, uh, to, or his 401k plan was not allowing him to take distributions under the CARES Act. And he felt that I was telling people incorrect information, uh, that, but the CARES Act is explicit. It, it allows you to do it, but your 401k, your plan sponsor is always going to be more lenient or more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, conservative potentially. If you look at the difference between an IRA and a 401k plan, the IRA is not subject to ERISA, Employee Retirement Income Securities Act. They're just not. 401k plans are. And so because the 401k plans are subject to ERISA, there's more risk to the plan sponsor, the employer. So the plan sponsor isn't all that keen on changing the rules at a, at a whim just so you have access to it. It's the weirdest thing. And I'll never forget this guy was like, I could tell he's like pissed. I said, dude, your 401k plan, they're the one who needs to change their, their documentation. The plan, I forgot the document they call it. It says, it has nothing to do with the act. The act is explicit. You can read the freaking act. It says right there. But your plan, and like my man Pulverizer, uh, didn't allow it. It's a uh, it socks, man. There's no other way around that. And the board of trustees denies it because they don't want the headache and the cost and the potential for liability. I can see that a mile away. IRAs, they don't have that right. The IRA has to follow what the IRS rules and regulations are for sure. All right, so we talked income. Now I want to go to expenses. My friends, don't put anything in here. Don't. Don't, don't put anything for local tax unless you live in New York City or some big city where they actually have a local tax. The state taxes are already calculated. Don't put anything here. Please don't. A lot of people will put, I'm telling you, a lot of people say, I'm going to spend uh, you know, 500 bucks a month on, on vacation. Don't put that here. The, there, nothing should be in expenses at all other than what, what, we're, what we're dropping down here. Unless you live in a city or a municipality, like I think Indiana, some of the places in Indiana that can put your local income tax, but don't put your state tax. Um, do not include state taxes. They're calculated automatically. Now, if you have some capital loss carryovers, uh, carry fours, then put them in, but don't put any expenses under this. I'm just, when it comes to your retirement, please, please, please. I cannot tell you how many people's stuff is jacked up here. Um, you can you can add all this if you want to average give yourself some uh, asset under management fees that you want to pay some guy you, by all means put it in there you, you can change all this but just don't put expenses in there uh, simply because of the fact it's already calculated elsewhere all right now let's take a break and we're going to go into see what questions we have here and then I want to go to the details of what we're looking at because uh, I hope this kind of gives you some thought process don't put anything in expenses now if you want to go to goal real quick you say, I want to add, you know, 10,000 a year as a uh, vacation goal. All right. Well, we're going to put vacation 10,000 a year. And we're going to say it's going to be joint. And we're going to say they're going to do it for the next 10 years. By all means, do that for sure. And we're going to do it every year. Every one year. We're going to put 10,000 a year uh, for vacation. You can do that for sure. Just don't put it here. Please don't put it here. Now you can add charitable giving. You can add all this. It's just, I mean, you can do the charitable giving is the one thing you could do, but you already have this now. If we go to ink, if we go to uh, goals, it's already one of the, if you go to details, it's already one of the things here. So it just, you don't want, I see a lot of people double dipping on their expenses and I just wish they would not do that. Um, all right. So now let's go to, we're going to go to, we're going to hit the, uh, um, all right, sweet, there we go. We're gonna hit retirement. So now we're going to the analysis here. And uh, yeah, your plan document, that's right, Vic. All right, so now we're going to the analysis. All right, so we're gonna go, the first thing I go to analysis, I just wanna see what we're looking like initially. Is there anything that jumps out at me? And you can see that uh, it all looks pretty good there. All right, so we're, we're sitting pretty. Um, that looks good. All right. So now what I want to do is we're going to go to confidence. I want to go to confidence and I want to see 
what the median, which is this dark blue vein, what the median looks like. Are we running at risk of, of getting close to no money? I get, we're just literally, I'm just throwing these numbers up here, but I'm just telling you what I do with people. I say, okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to see, are we, are we running the risk of getting close to zero dollars? And this is liquid assets, by the way. And you see this dark blue vein right there. That's your median liquid assets. This is not your home, your median liquid assets. And that means 50%, you have more, 50% of the time you have less. And what we're doing is we're sitting here thinking right about there, it looks like the lowest that we have. And in that regard, we have 321,000 of liquid assets, good boy. Uh, basically we take the outliers. So anything less than 5%, anything more than 95%, I don't pay any mind to, uh, but we have basically, uh, 95% of the time we have 142,000 or more dollars. I hope that makes sense. 95% of the time we have no more than 589,000 bucks. So 95% of the time we have between 142,000 and basically $600,000. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And then you see once social security starts kicking in, give me the coronavirus. Man, you're best. Thanks. Mm, but I love you any you're a Georgia Bulldog fan this guy. Once the uh, once social security starts kicking in and all that, you can see the liquid net asset value is growing is growing pretty significantly there. All right, so now we see that looks pretty good to me. I always go over to income. I wanna see how much of the income is stable. This is important because if you have high stability in your income because of pensions, social security, things like that nature, that means you're, I'm not saying you need to take more risk, but the stock market isn't gonna determine your probability of success, if that, if that makes sense. So in this case, 85.9% .9 of their income is stable uh, which is which is fantastic. That means the bulk of their income is relying on on Social Security, and that's what you want to see. You really want to see the stability of income because that means you can you don't have to freaking lay awake at night worrying about the stock market crash. All right, so that's good. I like to see that. So I always like to see that. Now there's all kinds of other stuff in here. You can do withdrawal rate if you want. And that you know that's interesting. I mean, three point seven, three point six. We have this one year, sixteen percent. It's always pretty cool. I, I just think it's interesting. You can look at all kinds of, just all kinds of stuff. Down 45% the first, I, I, by all means, play around with it for sure. But I just want to give you the kind of preliminary of what I'm doing. You can do comparisons. It's all kinds of stuff to do here, man. It's awesome. I do want to show you this stress test. The stress test is pretty interesting because um, this will show you that if the market, look, you can see I have all these stress test negatives on here. And again, if it's not, you always got to click on this action item button. So again, I'm under retirement stress test. Our baseline is there's 100% probability of success. There's, there's not one chance under these models that they're running out of money. They'll have money when they die at 90 years old. All right, that's the baseline. Now, if the market's crashed by 80%, the probability of success drops from 100% to 69.4. All right, so that's that's still pretty good if you ask me. And the reason for that is because they have stable income. Now they still have income. It doesn't mean that they're broke. It just means they don't have as much as they want to from a spending perspective. Uh, if taxes will be higher by 80%, they still have a 99.9% .9 probability of success. And the reason is that because social security isn't taxed uh, to some degree. I mean, in this case, it's not taxed much at all. And we'll get in that here in just a second. However, the big one, I think one of y'all asked about Social Security. If Social Security is reduced by 20%, that's it. 20% reduction in Social Security. That more than halves their probability of success. Slices in half. They have 100% probability of success under this model. But if Social Security is reduced by 20%, it's dropped to, to less than half. And the reason I want to point that out is because I hear all the time, they're going to cut our social security. Are you freaking crazy? They're, they're not going to cut your freaking social security. You know how many people are relying it for the bulk of their income? If they were to cut your social security, a huge swaths of the American population would be in a world of hurt. And those people are the ones who tend to vote the most. There's not freaking happening. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. What, is it solvent? No. 
Well, they'll figure out ways to at least kick the can down the road or what I always say, just raise the payroll tax by one half, 1% and be done with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you can see that's the big one right there. If you want to mess with that, by all means do so. And if you want to live in fear, they're going to cut your social security. I don't know what to tell you. I would say there's many other things to be worried about than that. Um, if they live an extra five years longer, they still that's not going to affect them. And the reason that is because they're going to have social security kick in just for another five years. Inflation will be at 3.5% higher than what I have it already, which is 2%. Well, they already do tax Social Security, but they're going to tax, I think it will be actually, I think what's going to happen, uh, Vinyl, is they're going to put it subject to uh, um, Bill Gates will get reduced benefits. Uh, what, what's the uh, means tested? Much more than it is now. But it'll be means tested in terms of how much you can actually receive. I think that's coming um, for sure. Uh, healthcare. So you can see all these things. Just remember, so uh, inflation will be 3.5% higher than the 2% I already have. Just keep that in mind. All right. So now let's go to cash flows because this is where it gets fun after I kiss Pablo on his head. Um, yeah, means testing. I think that's right. All right. So I want to show you cash flows. Notice their income flows here. And I always click on this. This is, I cannot tell you how important this stuff is right here. Income flows, $54,000 because they got Social Security kicking at $54,000. We got $1,500 a month for uh, old Lanny, uh, $3,000 a month for old, old Maggie. So that's $54,000. And uh, I hear all the time that you have to pay tax on Social Security. Well, not necessarily. They have no taxes on Social Security. They have no taxes on Social Security. They start to get taxes here, and we'll go into that why here in just a second. But now we have expenses, 30000 a year. That's 2500 bucks a month. Basically, we have housing. So remember, housing consists of mortgage principal, mortgage interest, property tax, and insurance and homeowner's insurance. All right, so remember that. We have housing is already uh, it's all-inclusive here. So we don't want to add another housing cost of property taxes, homeowners insurance, because it's already included when you put in your, your debt or you put, and you put in your, your value of your home with the property taxes and the homeowners insurance. All right, so we have that. We have healthcare, all right? So remember, uh, Lanny isn't on Medicare yet. Now she's, Maggie's gonna be on Medicare for just a little bit, but Lanny's not on Medicare yet, but next year they all, they both are. So the next year, 4355, that might be a little bit on the low end, frankly, but still they're gonna spend 8,700 bucks on Medicare and part B, part D, and you can even click on it. It'll say Medicare part B premium, Medicare part D premium, and then your co-pays out of pocket, whatnot. Now what happens is it won't happen with these guys here, but what's gonna happen if it is, if you are have to pay Irma higher Medicare premiums, you'll, you'll see a big jump. It'll go significantly higher, Part B and Part D. You'll see see a big jump if you got to pay, uh, you know, two, three, and four times as much uh, for Medicare premiums as what everybody else does because you make too much money. Um, in fact, I wonder. Let's try something. Let's let's do. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's do one time a pro. We're gonna go to a profile. Let's take a distribution of uh let's go to uh is it income i always forget where i want to go yeah let's go to income we're going to take maggie's going to take uh let's see in 2024 she's going to take a one-time distribution from her ira of how much she had in it we'll say four hundred thousand dollars just for simplicity i will say standard all right cool all right, listen, that should make that Medicare thing go way high. So we're going to take a $400,000 distribution from her IRA. We're going to go to cash flows. And we're going to see right here, plan distribution right there, expenses right here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so you'll, uh, healthcare right there. So you'll see in that one year, now remember 2024 is when she took the, the, uh, the $400,000 distribution. Her, their health, their Part B premiums went, well, we can actually click it on. Part B went from 2,200 to 7,600. It's a two-year look back, two-year look back. 
it's actually not 500,000 bucks where you have to pay that much. It's, it's a whole lot less, actually. Just look at the, what the tax code says. And you can see his Part D premium goes up by three times, basically. His Part B premium goes up by three times as well, all right? And so the same thing is going to happen to, to Maggie as well. So you can see they have significant Medicare Part B and Part D increases because of the distribution it took in 2024. So you got two years of a look back. So what you do in 2024 affects 2026 and whatnot. And so you can see right here, the software calculates it for you, uh, which is fantastic. But then the software goes back to what it was before. So just FYI, that is the big disruption in Medicare. If you take a big distribution out, you're going to have to pay a whole lot more. And it's basically around, uh, it's, it's not taxable income either. It's AGI. And AGI is, uh, that's all, everything to it before you hit your standard deduction. And off the top of my head, if you're married filing jointly, I think it was about 225, yeah, I can't remember, but it's about 225 or so when you're subject to IRMA. And the IRMA is the, uh, regard, the, the adjustment for Medicare, something related to Medicare Adjustment Act or something like that, income in relation to Medicare ad, is IRMA is essentially the income related in relation to Medicare Adjustment Act that you have to pay if uh, if you make over a certain amount of money. If you're single, it ain't much. It's like one ten. If you're married, filing jointly, it's like two twenty or something like that. It's it sucks, man. There's no other way around that. But so that's only going to get worse too, by the way. So let's go back in here and zero her income out that we just did right there. And and that's the whole point why I talk about the widow's tax trap because watch what happens. And I'm not sure what's going to happen if Maggie. Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, what happens is if if Lanny dies. Now let's go to taxes. Well, so let's go. Let's keep going. We'll keep going. I want to share with you. I've done this, so many videos on the widow's tax trap. I'm not sure I want to get too deep in that because uh, you should know that if you follow my channel at all. Um, oh boy. All right. So let's hide the enemy guy. Don't know who that is. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, anyway, so let's go to, we're going to go down to, uh, oh, so we talked about expenses. Now we're going to go to goals. All right. Um, so goals, remember we added that vacation goal. All right. So we got vacation and he's, they're going to take vacation for 10 years. And then we got other goals, all right? So the other goals were, were, were we have a couple of things. They're gonna have their loans for a couple of years of retirement. Then they're gonna retirement when their loan is gone, when they have it paid off. Um, and again, I just mess around with this, but you can do whatever you want. So when all is said and done, if we go to summary and we're gonna see what they have for total expenses, their total expenses are 30,000 for their uh, mortgage, their home insurance and their healthcare. And then this guy, goals of vacation and re with retirement with uh, having to pay the mortgage and all that. So their total outflows are $82,000. Their total inflows are $54,000. Huh. So they have net flows of 28,000 bucks, 28,000 bucks. So what is going on here? Net inflow 20, where's that money coming from? Anyone want to take a guess? Want to take a guess where that money's coming from? Well, it's simple. You go to accounts. And then we're going to go to withdraw. So I'm going now under retirement cash flows accounts. And then we're going down to uh, withdrawals from accounts. And you see it's coming from their bank account. It comes from the bank account first and foremost. All right, 20,203 comes from the bank account. But a bank account has already been taxed. So because it comes from the bank account, if you look at their 1040, you're going to notice, huh? They have eighty thousand dollars of income, but there's no income here at all for which they pay tax on, because that twenty-eight thousand dollars was coming from a pre-tax, uh, post-tax thing. So even though they get to spend it, it doesn't flow back. There's this doesn't flow to their ten forty. But the interesting thing is here's their social security fifty-four thousand dollars, fifty-four thousand dollars of social security five A five B. None of the their social security benefit is subject to taxation. So all they got is 26,100 standard deduction and not a penny in income tax at all. 
not a penny in income tax at all, all right? So now we got, you can see right there, they got big social security, no income tax whatsoever. And the reason is because they're taking money from their, their bank accounts. Now, I wanna show you, this goes back to what John, you were asking earlier. I wanna show you guys something. If we go to tax, and y'all can do this too here, and we're gonna go down to, this is, I love this, man. I think it's under distributions right here. Go to tax. Now, look, I've been using this software for three years. There's no way you're going to know as much about the software as I do if you're just jumping on. You just you, you just got to take the time to figure it out. It's, but it's so worth it, my friends. So we're under tax distribution. And right here, withdrawal strategy. You can change a couple things. I love the tax deferred, taxable, tax free strategy as a withdrawal strategy, because instead of taking it right out of the gate from their cash accounts, now what we wanna do is take it from a tax deferred account. And what happens if we do that? Well, we go to retirement. So I hope this makes sense. So we're saying we want to take our distribution. We want to come from our IRA before it comes from our taxable accounts. So we hit distribution proposal, hit refresh, And was a change. Oh, look at that. It reduces our, uh, our, our income that we have later on when we die from 717,000 to 526,000. Look at that. So if we take our IRA money out first, it's, that's a bad move. I mean, if we be simply because, and the reason for that is if we go to investments, our IRA money in this case is earning 5.2%, but their cash accounts is only earning 0.5%. So by taking money out of cash before we take money out of the IRA in this case, and not all the time, in fact, a lot of times it doesn't make sense to do this, but in this case it makes sense because simply we're, we're, we're switching out of no, basically hardly in any interest bearing account, even though we're not paying tax on it, uh, for a, we're going to allow a, an IRA to grow at 5.2. I hope that makes sense. It's pretty common sense stuff there, but I hope that makes sense. But anyway, let's go back to retirement. I think if I can go to tax, let's see. Oh yeah, sweet. So now let's go to proposed plan. We're taking the money out from the IRA first. All right, this is, look, ooh, ooh, what happened there? Anyone notice something that stopped? Mm. All right, current. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, what's happening here? Proposed. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Current. What do you suppose this is right here? Well, this is starting to get more and more taxes with RMDs kicking in. This is when uh, one of them dies. I forgot who dies first, and that's the widow's tax trap right there. Big time. So it goes from 4% federal tax to freaking 9.4% federal tax. Hmm. Interesting, huh? There's all kinds of things happening here. You got a big jump up there. Off the top of my head, I can't remember why. We could figure it out. But the figure, and if you want to figure anything out, just go to retirement. Why was there a big jump in that, when they hit 70 years old? Go to retirement cash flows. And when they hit 70, they had $86,000 of goals there. So what happened at 70? Oh, they had this right here. Some other goal at 75, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, they had, okay, they had, we had, we have, we, we have the double dipping on expenditures. So we'd have to fix that. I'm not gonna do that right now, but they, that's what happens. So anytime you see something that's odd, just go to retirement cash flows and just click on the, on the, uh, the hyperlinks until you see, Oh yeah, then you just go back. So what you do in this case is you go back to profile and you say, okay, we're gonna go to expenses. No, we're gonna go to goals where we're gonna go and we're gonna hit uh, retirement expenses without loans. And we're gonna say that starts in 2027, not 2026. All right, and that should change that real quick. All right, yeah, all right, there we go. So we got rid of that. So anytime something jumps out, just go back to your cash flows. Anyway, so let's take a look here, shall we? So one has taxes paying off big time later. One has taxes paying up front and then stopping. So what is going on with that? Well, let's take a gander 
as a matter of fact, at retirement. All right. So we're going to look at, again, probability of success. Now, it looks like, because I just got rid of that one uh, double dipping, it looks like we're losing $200,000 by taking money out of our IRA first. And I bet that's probably true because we're sacrificing a 5.2% account uh, while we're uh, keeping a 0.5% account. But anyway, so what is going on here? So, but however, that's not the end situation. We got to go to cash flows. I'm telling you, everything is based on cash flows, man. Everything. Cash flows is king and forever will be. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, accounts, ending balance by accounts. And we got proposed plan. Let's start with current plan. All right. So under current plan, when, when uh, I think Maggie dies last, she is going to leave the kiddos with 357,000 in a traditional IRA. Now, if we assume a 25% tax bracket to the kids, 357 minus 25%, that's $267,000. So she's going to lose $90,000 because of taxes when the kids inherit that money. Now, the taxable account will go tax-free, all right, because of step-up and basis rules. Taxable accounts will go tax-free. This will not. That's under current. Now, if we go to proposed plan, the IRA is going to be exhausted. Watch this, though. So now there's nothing in the IRA it's all in the Roth IRA, 683 million in a, uh, thousand in a Roth, 81,000 in a taxable account. No taxes at all whatsoever. And the interesting thing is, watch this. Again, we're going to go to cash flows. So this is, you got to look at more than just what this stupid analysis says, because the analysis might look like, you're like, oh, no way I'd do that. But you're, you're, you might be missing part of the point here. So we go back to cash flows. And we're going to say, okay, so under proposed plan, they're making, let's see, they're spending $89,000 in 2042. Not one penny subject to taxation. Not one penny subject to taxation. But $90,000, yeah, I'm in a good mood. $90,000, <laughs> do I come across like I'm not? $90,000 is income, but not one penny subject to taxation because it's all Social Security. All Social Security. And maybe Roth distributions. Let's see. We'll go to accounts. We go to withdrawals from accounts. Let's see. We got any, no, nothing from the Roth. Anyway, so a lot going on there. I, 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 I love this, man. I think it's, if we go to the 1040, So we go to 1040, we're going to see here, we're going to go to 20, let's say 2038, 82,000 in Social Security, only 5,000 of that is subject to tax. Yeah, right capital puts me in a good mood too, Scott. I love it, man. I, 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 it's just, it's fun because I can sit here all day long and say, whoa, if you did that, you could do this. If you do that, you could do this. Uh, I'll get your question in just a second, Peter. 82,000 social security benefits, only 5,000 subject to income tax, but it's not even subject to income tax because you have your standard deduction and you got your personal exemption. Just FYI while I'm on here, QBI will go away come the uh, 2026. It's going to go back to personal exemption. So you'll see where it says QBI, qualified business income, it's personal exemption. All right, it's QBI uh, until 2026 under the Trump tax bill. You're not going to have any, but after 2026, it's going to be personal exemptions. So if anyone's like, what is QBI? It's personal exemptions. So in this case, they got 82,000 of Social Security and they got no taxes. And if they want to take $100,000 of the Roth IRA to freaking, I don't know, go buy season tickets to the Washington Capitals, they can freaking do that. It's all tax free. It's all tax free, which means what does that mean? They have no income at all when they're looking at in terms of from a tax perspective. So when Bernie Sanders gets in office and we say, we're going to tax those who are making a lot of money. These guys don't have to worry about it because they, they look like they're poverty and they're poor, man. They got no income. Look, taxable income, nothing, nothing. Oh, oh, how does that not put anyone in a good mood? Oh, that is fantastic. I love it. All right. So anyway, so much more than just 
Well, my calculation says I'm not going to run out of money and I'm going to have 591000 if I do tax planning, but 801000 if I don't. So what we'd want to do, and this will go to your thing. Uh, you're going to, we'll go to your thing, Peter, but how do we uh, do a CD? I'll show you here in just a second. But what we want to do here is we want to go back to change. We won't want all that cash, that money sitting in cash in our checking account. We want to make this work. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to take 45,000 from the off here. I only show what I'm talking about. We're going to say, we're going to take 45,000. We're going to put it in the cash in the IRA. We're going to, we, uh, we're going to reduce 418 minus 45,000. It's going to give us 373 divided by 40.33, 9,248 shares. We'll just round up and say 9,250, all right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to exclude this. Remember we talked about exclude, in, including it in the plan or not. We don't want to include it in the plan because we want to come back to that, but we're messing around with this in the profile to see how it looks differently. You can't do that under the drop-down boxes and the slider bars, but you can do it in the profile. So always get comfortable with a profile for sure. All right. So now we're going to, we're going to do that right here, Charles. We're going to put that investment. We're going to add an account. We're going to add investment and say taxable account. We're going to say joint taxable account. And we're going to make a joint. We're going to add holding. We'll say VBK. Oops, VBK. And we're going to hit... We got $45,000 divided by 187.08. So now we're doing good tax plan. It gets us 241 shares of VBK. And we're going to say our cost basis is 45,000 bucks just for simplicity. All right. So what's happening now is we've moved our taxable accounts to more efficient at location. We made it aggressive. All right. But we made we haven't moved our IRA any more aggressive or less aggressive. Our overall portfolio is still the same. We still got forty five thousand in cash. We still got the same return, sixty two to thirty eight. We everything's still the same. But because we're now having our stocks in a taxable account, not paying much in terms of the uh, dividends or capital gains, um, and certainly not paying. Uh, there's no way. Uh, taxable interest in a VBK, for instance, because it's an aggressive stock account, watch what happens now. Now, I haven't run this. We're going on together. But watch this. Oh, let's see here. We got distribution proposal. I guess that changed as much as I would have thought. So let's take a look what happened here. I would have thought that would have changed it more, but let's see. Let's see what we got. So we're going to go to profile. I'm sorry, we're going to go to retirement. And this is where it's just fun. You just play around with it. You play, you play, play, play. You say, huh, that didn't work so good. How about this? This is what I do when I do financial plans with people, by the way. And I say, okay, let's go to accounts. In our taxable account, oh, there we go. That looks pretty good. It's now 163 in our IRA, 617. Okay, Roth IRA. It still seems like we have some work to do there. So probably what we want to do, I tell you what we want to do, is we want to go, and we don't want to start doing Roth conversions. Yeah, we, okay, these front end, all right there. We don't want to start doing Roth conversions until, all right, so we got, we're going to take, let's go to accounts here. We want to have withdrawals from account. How much is that going to Roth additions? Okay, good. No. All right, I guess, okay, All right, that was good. Yeah, so we, eh, we're taking a little bit too much from the IRA in the front end. What we'd have to do is we want to say at the, I don't like having to pay this amount of taxes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I don't, I would have to, I would like to look at this a little bit. I don't want to pay this right here at $23,000 in 2026. I don't want to pay this. I'd want to reduce that a little bit. So it probably stretched it out some uh, to make it. So this, this, if we go back to this tax is a little bit stretched out a little bit more. I don't want to pay 14.1%. That doesn't make any sense. 
I don't mind 8.6. That doesn't bother me, but we'd have to crunch this a little bit deeper. But what you can see here is um, here we're not paying much, 3.6. We got nothing here. So we might want to start saying, instead of doing distributions, start doing Roth conversions later on down the road. So a lot going on here, but oh, this one makes it fun, man. You can play this to your blue in the face. You can play with your blue in the face. That's fantastic. All right. So uh, Peter said, how do you uh, do a 2.45% CD? All right. So Peter, let's go into profile. And we're going to add an account. And I think there's a way you can maybe Daniel can remind me. Is there a way to make it so you can do a fixed account, a fixed rate? Uh, just. I thought there was. Daniel, do any of y'all know out there, is there a way to do a fixed rate? I, I forgot on investments. Nah, maybe not here. There, I could have sworn there's one you could do. So let's go to add account. Let's, maybe it is just under bank. No, I don't think that worked. because We already did bank. CD. There's a way to do it. I know for a fact there's a way to do it, Peter, where you can do a rate on a CD. I can't remember how I did that though. Um, add account, bank, car investment, maximum account. Add holding, maybe. Oh, maybe it's, let's go to add holding. Nope. Okay. Asset. Let's get rid of that. Asset class, cash, maybe. All right. Uh, other. Yeah. Let's go cash. Yeah. There's a way to do it, Peter. I just can't remember. Other. You go to other. Yeah, but that doesn't give us the uh, where you can put four two point four five percent. Yeah. What I would do, Peter, is I would actually here's what I would do in that regard. I would add. Um, there's a way to do it. I can't remember, man. Ah, uh, man. Scroll up. All right, so add account, other. Oops, hold on a second. I screwed that up. Let's get rid of this. We go to add it. Let's go to add account, investment, add asset class, other. Yeah, but I, was, I don't see where you get the, the two point, where you can add the 2.45 in there. Where do you add the, yeah, no, it is a bit delayed, yeah. I don't, I don't see where you can add the 2.45. Um, what I would do, Peter, it should be just add account other. Yeah, but it's not, yeah. What I would do is I'd put it in as Ginny May, V-F-I-I-X. That's going to be pretty close to your 2.45. Um, that's what I would do, frankly. There, there's a way to do it, man. I guarantee after this, we'll remember. An account. Other. Oh, there you go. Right on. Freaking Daniel, right on, man. Okay, add account other. Gotcha. All right, so Peter. Oh, sweet. Daniel, I don't care what they say. You're a good guy. I don't care what uh yeah, there you go. All right, sweet. So let's uh let's do this again. That's good. Good stuff, man. All right, so let's uh what we do is we go to add account other, all right, and it'll take you to this right here, asset type, and we can do whatever we want. We'll just say lifestyle, we'll say CD, we'll say Peter's CD, and we'll say owner's Lanny, annual growth 2.45. And I said, you said it's going to be a uh, you know, two, three year the current value of 50,000 bucks. We'll say cost basis, 50,000 bucks. And we'll say cost of sale, nothing. So there you go. Cool, man. That's uh, why not a four year bond at 2.45? Can you? Can you do that, Rick? A four-year bond in here? Add account, other. No, add account investment. 
at uh at asset class or at at bonds i don't how do you do a bond how do you model the the actual interest on a bond i don't uh same way i guess i guess you do the same thing right so anyway uh, it's, as you can see here, I don't know everything about this. Um, so, but just play around with it. It's fantastic. I thought you could do it here, though. I always thought. I wonder if they took it out because I could have sworn you could done CD. I know if you do variable annuity, though, you can do that. So let's do a new. Let's show you about a uh, fixed annuity. Maybe you could do that instead. Right there. There we go. We go fixed annuity. And you can do crediting rate, you know, 2.45 and just you just want to say, you know, Peter CD. The only drawback is non-qualified. So it's still going to say that you're not paying taxes uh, until you take it out. But I don't know, it could give you uh, something to think about there. And that's, I know you can do it on annuity. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. You could do it on the annuity. All right. So, hey, lots going on there. Um, all right. So let's read some of these comments. Uh, I just, man, start playing around this tax stuff. There's so much stuff in here, my friends. It's nuts. And what you'd want to do is start modeling Roth conversions. Uh, you'd want to just so much stuff to do. Why would you not do that? Just see what it looks like. Yeah, someone said, we don't know what the tax rates are going to be in 2038. That doesn't mean you don't use what we got right now. For heaven's sake, play around with it. See what it looks like. Start a plan what's based on today. Well, that's like saying we don't know what the stock market is going to be in 2038, so I'm not going to mess with that either. It's dumb. Don't do that. Just say, under today's circumstances, this is what my plan of action is going to be. I always reserve the right of situation dictates to change. It's okay. Adjust on the fly. But for heaven's sake, man, get a plan of action going out there because the biggest issue is the taxes. There's no getting around that. And get to know the 1040. There's so much stuff in the 1040. Maybe I'll do another video one of these days just working on the 1040. I, I, man, I could look at the 1040 all day long. I love it. It's freaking fantastic. I mean, I just, I, the, I, it makes me so, so happy. Social Security income and Roth IRA, you have no taxes, none, none whatsoever. It's nuts. I, <laughs> People always say, ah, you got to pay tax. No, you freaking don't. If your social security income is your only source of taxable income, you're not paying tax. It's just, there's no two ways around that. I don't care what your tax bracket is. I don't care if other income that you have, as long as the other income is tax-free, which is why people ask all the time, should I have any money, any money in a, uh, in a taxable account? And the answer is yes, because a taxable account, you can tap into it uh, you can tap into no, that's right. Most retirees don't pay much tax, but they could pay a hell of a lot less if they just did some basic tax planning. A taxable account. Remember, my friends, your your if it's a CD, a check, and a savings account is not taxable to you if when you spend it. It's just not. That will never add to your tax bracket. The only way it could is if you make an income off it, and you're not making much now. It's just all there is to it. But the actual withdrawal from the CD checking savings account is not taxable. What the, uh, uh, it's just not. And so that's a wonderful thing to use while you're waiting on, uh, on, on not having to add to your taxable income. So that way you don't have to pay social security taxes, higher Medicare premiums. It, it's, it's nuts. Now, on top of that, if you have stocks, bonds too, because bonds really don't have much of a difference between the cost basis in the, in the sale price. I mean, it's, it's, a bond should never have a difference in cost basis or the sale price. It will on occasion, depending on what the interest rates have done, but basically bond is always at par value uh, in terms of selling. Now it's not always time, but generally speaking, an old bond is gonna be tracking pretty close to your par value. Stocks won't be like that. So stocks, you could significantly have an upside big time. And because they gotta be careful on the sell, but if you have individual, uh, you have what's called specific identification, we can actually say, I'm going to sell these shares and not those shares. You can take money out of a taxable account tax-free by specific identification rules, which means that will not float your 1040, which still looks like you're a popper in Bernie Sanders' eyes. It's crazy. You just got to know how to do the tax stuff. And uh, was the idea that retirees don't pay much tax, you know, maybe, but are you most retirees? No, you're you. I can't. I, 
it's kind of like I was reading Scott. Someone sent me Scott Burns' article about the average retiree benefit. The average Social Security benefit is fifteen hundred bucks. I could care two craps about that. I don't care. What's your Social Security benefit? The average Social Security benefit matters to the actuaries. It doesn't matter to you. Your Social Security benefit is what matters to you. So the average retiree doesn't pay much tax. I could care less. What are you going to pay? What steps can you do now to reduce that? And it's not the state, by the way. I deal with lots of people in Maryland, California, and they say, I got to get out of here because of taxes. The taxes aren't the problem in those two states. It's heavy regulation in a totalitarian governments. But it's not the taxes. It's the feds that the tax you the most. And so what you want to do is when you're in the lowest tax bracket, start doing what you can to reduce the feds taxes because they're going to get you, man. And when they do, there's nothing you can do about it. I guess you can move to Puerto Rico. Uh, my man Alberto is here from Puerto Rico. Uh, what if the 45K was in your bucket still put in Ginny May? It depends on, uh, on Scott. It depends on, I mean, my, my personal, in this case here, I would rather have that uh, the taxable account be aggressive as all can be because a step-up basis rules because it's very tax favorable in a taxable account if it's an ETF. I would much rather have these people pulling money from their IRA first in which to live off before the social security kicks in, if that makes sense. I can't stress this enough. Ideally, when they hit social security, we'll just say at 70, we haven't run difference in social security at 70 and I'm not gonna get that tonight. Ideally, social security at 70 plus tax, Roth IRA money or just taxable investment money, <laughs> That is the best. That is the best thing ever because they have no income from a tax a 1040 perspective. They had none. It's awesome. Now that's going to be harder to achieve, especially if you have a pension. It's almost going to be impossible to achieve. But if you don't have a pension and you're just say 60 to 62, man, I would be not tapping in my IRA. I'd be tapping my IRA like a crazy man, deferring Social Security for as long as I have, and I would be freaking man. I'd be. I'd be. I would. I'd be doing that like crazy. The problem is, let me just stop screen share. Um, the, the problem, frankly, is that a lot of people are saying I, they don't want to take it Social Security at 70. Um, you know, they, they take it earlier. So the, the worst thing is to take Social Security early and then take your IRA distributions at 70. That, that's, not, uh, that, that, that's not what we're trying to talk about. We, we don't want to do that for sure. Um, and so what we want to do is do the exact opposite. Social Security has 70 IRA distributions early. If you can do that, that's the way to go. Now, for you, Scott, though, if memory serves, I think you have a pension. It's a little bit more of a challenge for sure. But instead of cash, I'd put in Ginny May. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever hidden my preference in Ginny May just because it's the Government National Mortgage Association. is not the uh, it's Fannie Mae. It's not Freddie Mac. It's the Government National Mortgage Association. And because of that, you know, it's guaranteed. There's no risk to the bonds at all. Now, there's on any given day, the price of Ginny Mae bonds could drop. That's a fact. I've had some net years where it went down, not much. But I would, I would be happy to take the risk to get some kind of yield relative to cash for sure. Hope this makes sense. Um, uh, max tax, Cali's 13%, not the clients I'm dealing with. 13%, you got to have big bucks. My clients got not, not big bucks, not hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in income. All right, you got it, Peter. Uh, bond of two and a half, four-year bond of two and two and uh, two point four five. If you can get a four-year bond of two point four five, um, that's not bad. I just, uh, but my man Peter's got a, a CD at two point four five. I'd take the CD over the bond any day of the week, frankly. So, if you can get a bond of two point four five for four, that's trading at par. I bet you can. Um, but it just depends on the credit rating. I, I, look, I'm not trying to mess with bonds. I, I, I think the bond market is stacked against individual investors big time. The three biggest proponent, uh, three biggest uh, entities in bond markets are insurance companies, pension companies, and governments, and they're going to dwarf you. And I, I'm sorry, the guy Ed Jones, who's got his computer model, his computer that, that he looks at for credit quality and current yields, yield to maturity, and yield to call. That, that guy is not going to hold a candle to USA, MetLife, you know, sovereign wealth funds. They're just not going to hold a candle to them. It's just not. That doesn't mean you can't find a good bond. I mean, I don't want to sound like that, but you're always going to be on the short end of the stick every time. And don't forget, when you're buying a bond, 
there's always going to be up. You're going to get, uh, they don't charge a commission. They charge a, uh, they pay 245 and they're charging you 300. That's basically what it is. I've, I've drawn a blank what that term is called, but the, the bond market it ain't quite as clean as what they make it seem. But and remember, the bond market dwarfs the stock market by, I don't know, I think a seven to one factor or something like that's crazy. Uh, hey, we got great riff is here, right on. Uh, my 403B has a $29 annual fee regardless of balance and has mostly low fee index funds uh, and a money market guaranteed at 1%. Other money market guarantee at 3% stamp. Hell yeah, Joe. I want to get out of there to save my life, man. Stay there. Does anyone know why live chat stops scrolling? Yeah, I've noticed that my too, man. Um, do I think the step up of basis will be eliminated in the future for taxable accounts? No. Uh, computers can easily keep track of that nowadays. Nice source of revenue for the government. I, I don't think it will. I, I, what's going to happen is they're going to get a, a bring back the estate tax, Daniel, first. Uh, they're not going to mess with, I mean, I haven't heard any legislation, even when Charlie Rangel ran the House Ways and Means, and he was wanting to, uh, you know, the taxpayer that he is not, and he was wanting to increase this, the, uh, the estate tax. Uh, he wasn't talking about getting rid of step up in basis. The, 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 or I would say increase literally the taxes you pay or decrease the exemption amounts. Though, they'll, they'll, uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, you look, and this is where I, I completely disagree with my libertarian friends. I got no qualm with a wealth tax, none whatsoever. I'd much rather have a wealth tax than a stupid estate tax anyway. Um, but what they'll do is they'll say, you know, because once you know, like Trump's going to win re-election and then 2024, all bets are off. And I, I would actually say we're probably you have to go with a Democrat at that point. Um, and when that happens, uh, especially whatever happens at the Senate, uh, which and who knows? But at, they're going to get the money and they're going to get the money uh, by means testing, which is what Social Security has done without being adjusted for inflation. They're going to get the money by uh, increasing estate taxes, even though the estate tax itself doesn't raise much revenue. Everyone knows this. Even the biggest lefties, Larry Summers, they know it doesn't raise, raise much revenue. So what other lefties have done is say, well, it doesn't raise much revenue, but it helps with wealth inequality. I, I just, frankly, I'm sick of these rich guys using all their wealth to fund these NGOs and get it tax free. Screw that. If you want tax free, you're going to donate to some crazy loon group in freaking Europe who's you know basically giving money for green Nazis to fly over the place. Nah, screw that. Let's get it in the treasury. Let the treasury spend some of that money to shore up Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Uh, I was reading uh, Leon Kupperman the other day. He's like, I've given 50% of my money at my debt to the giving pledge. Whoa. I'm like, hell, well, if you're all that willing to give it away, give it away now. Like uh, red hot chili peppers, get away, get away, get away now. Uh, it drives you crazy, man. And I'm just like, no, screw that. Um, so I would think that there's going to be a decrease in, exempt, in exemption amounts and an increase in the, in the rates. All right. And that's what we was prior to Bush, one, two. It was 675. With a 55% estate tax rate, 675. And if you lived, if you're a poor soul who died in New Jersey up until about 2014, and if you're in Massachusetts now, it's still a million bucks, man. And don't forget, that includes your freaking life insurance, your estate. Your, if you own life insurance, it is included in your estate. Your house, your 401k, your life insurance, your Ted Williams rookie card are all included in your estate. So in Massachusetts, it ain't hard to get above a million dollars. And it's even worse is that if you look at how it works, it goes back. Ah, yeah, Once you breach that million bucks, you don't get the first million tax free. It reverts back as if you the whole thing's nuts. Whole thing is insane. I can't. When I, I for a short time, I worked in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I had a lot. We had a lot of clients in Massachusetts. And I remember talking to some of these people. And I'm saying, you have no clue. And they're like, man, I'm just a retired cop. I said, dude, you're gonna get killed, man, killed. Ah. And I remember trying to. we uh, right before I left the company, I had talked to a couple of state planning attorneys in Boston, and we we're gonna do seminars. Um, uh, going out there because I said these people have no clue what's going on and they're going to get smoked and uh anyway long story short my boss did not see eye to eye with uh with the benefit of doing estate planning seminars 
because it didn't bring revenue into the firm right out of the gate. And I said, oh, you're missing the boat here, sister. You don't understand. We're talking stuff that no one else is talking about. And because of that, um, people see us a lot more favorably than the competitor firms that we're, we're trying to, to compete with. But uh, her business should do whatever she wants. I just, I was, ah, anyway. So I don't think they're going to raise the, uh, uh, get rid of the step up basis. I, I don't think so. Way too many people have situated their planning based on that. And if they were to do that, pitchforks uh, without question. Uh, yeah, man, Rob, you're going to get, uh, man, I love Gina from California. You're able to get on here tonight without any code violations, huh? Because Gina on our, Live stream, subscribe star live stream every week, by the way. If you want to join me and about 60 other people on subscribe star, it's 10 bucks a month, or you can pay 25 bucks a month if you want. You can do whatever you want, but it's a minimum of 10 bucks a month. We're gonna do a weekly subscribe star only live stream. It's fun. I like it. I like that a lot, actually. It's uh it's, it's a good time. kind of stuff we're doing here, but on a regular basis, uh, we'll we'll it's just it's a lot more fun. People can actually call in. So it's subscribestar.com slash Josh Scanlon. And if you uh, want to jump on that and subscribe, you can delete it anytime you want. You can tell me to go pound sand. You know, if you don't like my take on on the wealth tax, uh, who else was mad at me? One guy was mad at me because I my lack of fear about the commie virus. I was listening to Joe Rogan today. I couldn't believe it. So I was listening to Joe Rogan interviews Joe Salatin. And Joe Rogan said that when the first thing started coming out of the commie virus, he would have way awake at night worried that he might have the virus. He's like, do I have it? Do I have it? I, 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 I just, the, the fear porn is, is insane. Out. I just don't, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Joe Rogan. I was like, man, I thought, I, I was crazy. All right, uh, let's see, let me go back up here. So Mike says, if GDP for 2021 is still up or flat relative to 2020, does Social Security still get cut for those who turned 60 in 2021? All right, so the GDP is still up for 2021. So basically the issue is if the GDP is down in the year and you turn 60. So if the GDP is up in the, which the year you turn 60, um, then it will, it, uh, if the GDP is up, then it won't be for sure. If the GDP is up, then it won't. That's uh, well, I hate to say for sure. Who knows? But they, if we look at 2008, nine, and ten, the people who retired in two, who turned sixty in 2010, did not get the haircut that the people who retired and turned sixty in 2009 did. If that makes sense, because 2008 was up, 2009 was down, 2010 it was up. So, and I the videos I've done will show that. Now the issue is, and this is my issue, Mike. A lot of people think uh, that the uh, <laughs> a lot of people think that the the GDP in 2021 will just miraculously go up because what California, as much as I can't stand that government there, is such a huge portion of the American economy. If those fools out there don't get their act together. They're going to keep the GDP for the whole country low, if not zero, to not negative. I mean, California is huge. And that state is, it's, it's, I don't know what the hell's going on there. It's crazy. And on top of that, I don't think people recognize the extent of the unemployment. I, I, I sit there and I'm in just in, in awe at the seem, seemingly, in my opinion, the lack of I, knowledge of putting was it 32 million people or something like that? I, th this uh, this doesn't just correct itself overnight. I, uh, it's crazy. But thankfully, you can go to the liquor store, but you can't go to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. I heard that from Joel Salatin today. I thought that was pretty funny. You want to go buy alcohol, you're more power to you. Just don't dare you go to an AA meeting. Freaking nuts. Yeah, all these people kiss my butt. I'm sorry. That just that my man uh, Charles said in my good mood. That ticks me off. That kind of stuff ticks me off. The arbitrary of this with big government and their tentacles everywhere. And everyone's like, oh, I'm scared. Anyway, so uh, now if 2021 is positive, you'll be fine. Uh, Mike, if 2021 is positive, I don't know. I don't necessarily think that's a given by any stretch of the imagination. I don't. Even if Trump's reelected, don't forget, in, 2000, in 1921 and 1922, we had pretty 
libertarian presence and Harding and, and it was Coolidge in there yet, but uh, he was part of the, the system. And then we still had two significant years of down with, with two pretty significant right wing libertarians. They just said, well, hands off, let this stuff take care of his course. And that was after the Spanish flu and World War I. I mean, we had two years of, of mass, mass uh, cutbacks, a rec- a dis- depression. Uh, James Grant has written a book on this. It's crazy. The Silent Depression. And uh, I think it's what it's called. And uh, just because Trump is reelected, if that were to happen, and hopefully the Republicans retain the Senate, if that were to happen, doesn't mean that uh, just magically the economies can go back to... Uh, to I mean, hell, wasn't booming, wasn't a Reagan-esque booming before this? And uh, I, I'm, I'm pessimistic that we're going to get significant growth in 2021. But I could see growth. I could absolutely. Uh, is there any way to get the current plan to follow the distribution strategy? Plan to fall. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I, I, my head's uh, gone on too long, Jill or JB. I can't figure that one out. Uh, all right. So Nancy says having trouble. How to categorize funds? They're called large blend, small blend, small growth. Should I use the benchmark they use? Yes, I would just absolutely, uh, Nancy. I would just find a. Um, uh, an index fund and just be done with it. VFINX, the Vanguard total, uh, the, the Vanguard S and P 500 index, or just VTSAX, the total stock market index. You don't need to be too specific. If you're not going to link your accounts, the specificity specificity is not that all that important. It's just knowing how much of stocks versus bonds versus cash you have for sure. All right, I guess I'm I'm getting wiped out here, guys. So we will see you all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You got you got to limit your news. That's what. Uh, that's what who, I think I posted. That's what Joel Salton said. He goes, the people who are who follow do nothing but follow the news are living in in persistent fear. Man, They're crazy. Yeah, my man. Uh, Rob turns 60 this year. That uh, that might suck. That might suck. That's for sure. But remains to be seen. But uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled. So appreciate you all being here, guys. Thanks for the comments. Uh, see me Tuesday. What's going on Tuesday? Oh, for the, that's right. Tuesday for the Social Security webinar. I'm not doing that. Just FYI. Uh, I'm not doing that, but right on. See me Tuesday. But uh um yeah chat is getting stuck i don't get what's uh so i'm if i miss your thing i it's 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 like throwing a million at me all at once i I see a couple and then then i don't see anything and then i see like twenty five thousand. and so it's throwing me i'm gonna go watch some masterpiece theater with my beautiful actually we're watching episode five of world at war which from uh it's okay but anyway all right we'll see you guys thanks for being here much obliged